Hi, I'm Ali Plum and this is Digital Spy's spoiler filled analysis of Spectre. If you've not seen the film already, press the button marked ejector seat now. This organization, do you know what it's called? Its name is Spectre. Still with us? Good. Because here's what went right and what went wrong with James Bond's 24th official big screen adventure. For the first hour, things went well, kicking off with that gorgeous tracking shot in the opening Day of the Dead sequence, the joyfully nauseating helicopter fight, and that Simpsons-worthy couch gag. Franz Oberhauser's introduction is beautifully shot and delightfully menacing, the snowtop plane and car chase delightfully bonkers. A great gag here, a so-so gag there, a car chase involving a fiery exhaust. So far, so very good Bond, if you're willing to overlook 007 having sex with the widow of a man he's just murdered, what? kissing her like a parrot eating seeds. James. But after Mr. Hinks is dispatched, and perhaps even during l'American hotel scene, things get a bit muddled. Oberhauser goes from quiet creep to generic Christoph Waltz 3.0, all chatty and silly, cuckoo, cuckoo, etc. And suddenly you get four moments on the trot where if you're watching this with your dad on a Sunday afternoon, you'd probably do a tea round. The torture sequence is, well, tortured, and the family backstories are confusing and rushed, with the dodgy old photo Photoshop not helping. Swan and Bond's love story, meanwhile, is utterly unbelievable, made more so by the regular reminders of a better romance with Vesper Lind in Casino Royale. The final hour is too introspective generally, or should that be introspective? Coming back to London, reusing the MI6 building, photocopying old mugshots from past characters, even Quantum's Mr. Green gets a look in, if you remember him. Worst of all, the Blofeld reveal is as badly fumbled as Khan's was in Star Trek Into Darkness. Yes, the cat gets a laugh, but that's about it. And Waltz has the scar now, but after all this, I was behind it all! Grandstanding, the finale is a man with a tiny gun on a boat shooting a helicopter in the dark. This is not the big finish for a movie as long or as grand or as initially promising as this one deserved. The whole third act reeks of reshoots, and this bombs everywhere plot feels like a fallback to a fallback idea. And what on earth was that meteor all about? Beautiful, bold, and finally unafraid of using the nods and winks the series used to rely on, there's a lot of good Inspector. It's such a shame then that it all falls apart in the final act, scrambling together disparate ideas, a trite romance, and an ultimately pathetic villain. As for whether Craig will come back, that all depends on the box office, which makes it your responsibility.